Welcome to Saturday's Warrior. I'm Trevor, and on this channel, we talk BYU and Big 12, but we also do a lot on conference realignment, but obviously from that Big 12 slant, uh, which is why today we have joining us Jesse from Plant the Spear uh, to help fill us in and bring us up to speed on the Florida State perspective on realignment. Obviously, obviously we know that they are in the thick of it. And uh, Jesse and I are, are part of something else that uh, we, uh, we'll be rolling out here in April. So uh, keep uh, an eye out for that um, as we get closer to, to doing that. And obviously, we'll, we'll put announcements and things out. But uh, Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, man, I'm super excited to be on and to talk about some realignment. It is really, like you said, we're in the thick of it, and it is the talk of college football right now as this the game that we love is – you know, shaping and forming in, in different ways than we're used to. And it's it's not almost not recognizable from from where it was a few years ago. But I, I'm excited about the future. And hopefully, you know, when the the large scale game of musical chairs ends, hopefully we end up where we want to be. But yeah, man, I'm super excited. I'm also excited about the partnership that you hinted at. I think it's going to create uh, an ex exciting college football outlet for everybody who's going to be involved and for the fans as well. So I appreciate you having me on. Well, yeah, I really appreciate it because we we talk a lot, and I have I've had other guests on, but a lot of us are coming at this from, like I said before, a Big Twelve perspective, primarily, you know, out west. And uh, while I live in ACC country, uh, still uh, my perspective is probably a little bit skewed. And and we know that Florida State um, is kind of a, the catalyst of a lot of the discussion yeah. that's happening right now. But before we jump into that, what? What was your take? What was your feeling when you first saw uh, the moves of uh, first Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC and then the Big Ten going and getting a USC and UCLA? Well, I think it's obviously you're looking at moving towards the super conferences. That's what it feels like with, with these two, you know, the two main power conferences kind of grabbing up. I mean, let's face it, big, huge name brands of those two conferences. It's not like they you know, undercut anything. They took the two top brands from, from the big 12. They took some of the top brands from the pac 12. And so I think it was really kind of a, a ground shattering move for everybody. And I think it really opened the door to kind of the fire drill of conference realignment where everybody's like, okay, it looks like we're going towards the power conferences. We got to end up where we need to end up sooner than later. And I think that it, it is funny when you talk about it from a FSU perspective that everybody really kind of jumped on FSU's back about the lawsuit that they filed against the ACC and how, you know, some national writers were were like basically the Darth Vader of college football. We're trying to bring everything down. And it's like, yeah, man, but the SEC kind of started everything by going and poaching two teams from the Big 12 and then the Big 10 followed suit, poaching all these other teams. Essentially, you know, the death nail, the nail in the coffin to the Pac-12. So it's like Florida State is just doing what is best for their brand, for their program, which is no different than what, these other conferences did by snapping up the other brands. So now we're just trying to be in that conversation. We just obviously with the lawsuit, the grant of rights and all that stuff that we're going to get into, we kind of have the highest hurdle to jump to be in that conversation. So that's kind of where the legal action has come from. But yeah, I think it just shows that, you know, the future of college football is changing and, and I mean, it was surprising to see such big name brands go somewhere, but it's become an arm race, arms race, you know, in college football nowadays. So you can't really blame anybody for doing what's best for their program because, you know, this is probably part of a larger conversation in college football, but there's no one looking out for the sport of college football. You basically have a bunch of, you know, like the, the AFC South looks out for the AFC South and, and NFC South. Like if you're looking at the NFL, no one's really looking out for everybody. So you can't blame them for getting a, a gaining a competitive advantage. And you can't blame the conferences for for taking advantage of that. Yeah, it does definitely feel. Yeah, I mean, it it really is the wild west. You're right. Absolutely, nobody's looking out for the best of the sport. The NCAA seems to have lost any sort of uh, teeth yes. that it may have ever had, um, and has completely lost control of the situation. And so, yeah, I don't blame any individual, you know, school going out there and trying to do its best to, you know, position itself, especially now that it looks like, you know, things could go the way of super conferences. Nobody wants to right. be left behind. So everyone's got to do what they can to uh, position themselves now. So, yeah, I'm not blaming any school. It's more of a, but, you know, at least myself, I don't like the way it's going. You know, it's, yeah. it really is too bad. We're, we see, you know, the demise of some, really old long-standing conferences a lot of traditional rivalries a lot of regionality 
um, which we'll get into. So I, you know, it is a bummer and it's, it's especially <laughs> as a BYU fan, cause it's, uh, you know, for so long, BYU was just on the outside looking in. Uh, I think of, this is probably a bad, uh, analogy for BYU fans, but thinking of standing outside of a club and we're next in line and then we yeah. keep getting passed up by the guy behind us or people behind us. Cause there's some prettier girls with them or something. So they let right. them. Uh, pass in and so we're you know it feels like we we were perpetually the next team in line and just never really quite getting that invite and then we finally get in just to find out that the party's moved right. you know, to the club next door or something right so, so um it it does stink but um from that perspective but we you know we love being in the big 12 but and actually speaking of florida state thinking back i remember when that grant of rights was signed and uh, because the I think the Big 12 had been flirting with mm -hmm. FSU and Clemson for some time. And so when that grant of rights was signed, I was relieved because I was like, OK, good, because that's our you know, if they go that way, BYU will never get in. Now BYU still has a chance to get into the Big 12. And so I remember that as being a, a good thing uh, for us. So that brings us to the topic of discussion. There is this grant of rights. Florida yep. State is um, is currently suing and being countersued and trying to get out of the ACC. So can you kind of help us wrap our head around all that and, and what's the latest there? So there's really a couple, there's so many moving parts to anything legal, which is what's going on here. And for what it's worth, I'm not a lawyer. I don't uh, pretend to, to interpret the law in that type of way. We're going to hold uh, you is, to everything you say. Exactly. This is not legal opinion or anything. This is just me interpreting it myself. But the first thing to understand is the grant of rights itself. Now, the ACC seems to think it's ironclad. And I think what the misinterpretation with a lot of the lawsuit stuff is Florida State and Clemson are pretty much just looking for the court to say either yes, it is or no, it's not. Because the ACC is the wildest business partner. Some of the practices that they have that I've ever heard of, like as far as the ACC grant of rights. I mean, this is literally like the, the movie where they're trying to steal the Declaration of Independence. I mean, it stays locked up in the ACC office in Charlotte. You are not allowed as a member school of the conference. You are not allowed to have a copy of it. You are not allowed. It is not allowed to leave the ACC offices in Charlotte. You are not allowed to make copies. You are not allowed to write down verbatim what it says. It's extremely fishy. Let's just say that to, to the way they protect this grant of rights. And so what it is right now is they're looking at the grant of rights. The exit fee for the ACC is around 130 million. With the grant of rights, which everybody I'm sure that watches the show is up to you know up to date on college football, you understand that every single conference has a grant grant of rights. Everybody does. That's how you get TV contracts. And so the ACC is currently in has the ability to run through 2036. Now there is a couple of other things here to keep in mind. There is an option for a unilateral extension from 2027 to 2036 for the rest of the the period which nobody knew about until Florida State filed their lawsuit. That's kind of where this got brought to light. Now, ESPN has not picked up that extension yet, which is kind of, it makes you think, because they, they are basically locking it in at rates negotiated when they first signed it over ten, almost 10 years ago. So you're talking about they're getting it at a, at a cheap rate anyway. Why not lock that in? Right. Now, they were granted, the ACC commissioner, Jim Phillips, granted them an extension, which is kind of a point of contention right now, whether the, the other conference members agreed to that or not. And it gives them the, he gave them an extension to pick this contract up, which is due in 2025, I believe in February of 2025. So that's important to remember because that's a date that could be significant. One, if the grant of rights extension doesn't get picked up, it now expires in 2027. So that would either put a Florida state or the ACC in general in the position of the PAC 12, where they can go out and shop their media rights around. You have, you know, uh, Amazon and things like that, that are trying to get into sports streaming, but that while that could be good for the ACC to negotiate a higher rate, it's also a risk that like you're running with the PAC 12, where they just couldn't get the value they were looking for. Now they ended up with no deal and everybody bolted for the door. So really what Clemson and Florida state are doing right now is they're just, looking for clarification because the ACC won't let anybody see these documents. They're even arguing in the court right now that how can the court make a just decision if they don't have the document because they won't even let the court see it. So there are so many moving parts to this. 
And I think really what they're they're trying to do with this grant of rights is to see whether the court will hold it up or not, because both Florida State and Clemson, while they have individual lawsuits, kind of argue a lot of the same points. One, that the exit fee, which is three times the ACC's operating budget, is basically unjust and it, they shouldn't be held to that. The other argument is that it says in the grant of rights that they basically own your home football media rights through 2036 as long as you're a conference member. Well, they're arguing if we're not a conference member, technically you don't own those rights. And so the latest of where we're at in this lawsuit right now is Florida State just kind of there's this is why there's so many moving parts. You have a, a lawsuit in North Carolina where the ACC preemptively sued Florida State, which was they're arguing that Florida State's arguing that you, there's no basis of that lawsuit. You sued us because you thought we were about to file a lawsuit and we did. And so they're trying to get it thrown out basis, uh, based on that. But at the same time, they're trying to say that technically ESPN thinks releasing this grant of rights to the public is divulging trade secrets. Now, if you're one of the most poorly negotiated conferences, TV contract wise, what trade secrets are you trying to hide? So Florida state thinks there's some, some, bad stuff that they don't want in the discovery phase. They've named things with the old uh, director of the conference where they did maybe some shady dealings that may come out. John Swafford, most of you guys know that name, have heard it at least brought up, where there was some, his like nephew or son was the president of Raycom Sports, and there was a clause in the contract that they had to do dealings with Raycom Sports. There's a lot of shady stuff in the, in, in the contracts, which is why Florida State thinks they don't want it to come out. So, I say all that to say the latest development is Florida State is basically saying if you do business with us in the state of Florida, these contracts are now subject to Florida law. Florida law requires everything to kind of be an open book. This is why Florida State sued out in the open where everyone said, you know, Clemson, why did they do it in the background? Florida State has to do it in public because of the sunshine laws. That's what they're called in Florida. So everything has to be open. Clemson has been working on this probably just as long as FSU. They just don't have to do it in public because of South Carolina law. So there's a lot of moving parts. But Florida State really just wants to get things, and Clemson for that matter, wants to get things out in the open so everybody can interpret this fairly and freely and to see if this even holds up. So that's really kind of where the lawsuit actions are right now is the discovery phase. Now, of course, everybody thinks they don't want to get to the discovery phase with ESPN because, you know, then you then you could possibly start calling ESPN executives and school presidents and things like that to the stand to testify. And there's things that they may not want to be in there. Um, and, I, and, and, and the last thing I'll say on that is the reason that 2025 date is important is if ESPN – does not pick up that extension. The ACC is essentially dead in the water at that point. They're going to be shopping media rights, and you're probably going to be doing it without Florida State and Clemson, your two largest football brands. So that could be troublesome for them. So I would think that they want to have – ESPN wants to have this kind of wrapped up by that early 2025 so they know if they're signing a, an extension with or without Florida State as part of the ACC. So it's there's a lot that's going to play out. Nothing really ha has been like – ground shaking as far as the lawsuit goes so far but it has progressed and and the gloves have come off i think both sides actually have a pretty good argument so you know but everything with legal could take years upon years we haven't really seen anything concrete yet but i still think it's going to end up working out to where florida state and clemson and maybe unc and and whoever else they want to let out get out before the whole thing collapses because you know they still do have where if enough teams are unhappy they can crash the whole party so you think there, there's a chance that they just say, all right, we're going to let you guys go in the hope that we can not lose everybody and we keep the bulk of the conference together. Right. I think that is a, I think that is something that, that I think could happen because if you have, say, Florida State and Clemson, UNC, Virginia, I would say those probably almost guaranteed have a landing spot. Louisville is probably another one feels like a good fit in the Big 12. Let's be honest. I, I said this the other day in, in a on a show we had where this is a game of musical chairs and there aren't chairs for everybody. Wake Forest, you know, Boston College, teams like that 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 just don't bring viewership and don't bring success on the field. I mean, we all know that as much as we love college basketball, it's March Madness time and all that stuff right now. Football is what brings the money. Football is what supports all the Title IX sports and things like that. You have to have football. And so I think some of the ACC teams are content with staying where they're at. That's also why the ACC brought in the new three members, because they have to stay above a certain threshold. I believe it's around 14 teams. 
in anticipation for some teams leaving. So I think it's it's a situation where if you have enough members that are happy, and like Miami, for example, everybody thought Miami was ready to, to join everybody's lawsuit and get out of here. They come out the other day and supported the ACC's decision. And so it's like there a lot of that may be due to the smoke that they don't have a power to offer. And so I think you could see a situation where they let the teams who really want to go walk. And I think UNC, if they join the lawsuit, that's – huge i mean that's an acc blue blood just like clemson is a founding member of the acc now jumping on their back too i think they very well could let some walk to save face for any little like maybe they become the big east but everyone who works for the acc still has a job because if you open the floodgates there may not be an atlantic coast conference at all and so it's it's a fight for survival you know but again if you get to where it's so uh dysfunctional that enough teams decide to leave you crash the whole thing hmm very interesting. Yeah, no, all this is helpful because when, you know, when I hear about these lawsuits, and this is the opinion of a lot of people, they hear about both Florida State and Clemson. It's like, well, you guys are saying the grant of rights isn't fair, but you signed it and agreed to it. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know. You're, you're right. There's arguments on both sides of it. And it'll be interesting. There's a lot of nuance there. And it'll be interesting to see if they're ever able to even get that grant of rights reviewed and explored uh, right be interesting to see what's in there um you talk about landing places though so florida state is obviously talked about and obviously a, a big brand has talked about one of the the teams that um you know will most likely have a, a landing spot with the power two conferences so as um you know assuming that either you know florida state is able to work its way out or is a or you know something happens to the whole ACC? Um, at Florida State is there looking at okay now where do we go? There's a few options. Obviously the well the obvious ones are Big Ten, SEC, um, and so when you look at those, there's obviously pros and cons to both. So the Big Ten obviously not very uh, regional, um, right. and you know there's maybe some other complications there. Whereas the SEC, yeah, it's more regional. It, seems like a good fit in a lot of ways, but also there's been some bad blood and, you yeah. know, there's talk that, you know, maybe Florida and Florida state don't really want to be in the same conference. So um, from your perspective, uh, where, how do you see, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I want to know what your own personal opinion is on, on what you'd like to see with Florida state and where you think they stack up best, but also uh, what do you think that the the fan base in general is feeling or are, are they, are you in lockstep with the fan base in general and, and thinking one way. And what do you think the most importantly, what the Florida state administration is looking at? What do, where do you think their mind is on the matter? Yeah, I think that's a good question because there's a couple of different mindsets as far as where Florida state should land. I think there's the, what we want is the sec. What we need is anything but the ACC. And then <laughs> what's most likely to happen, I feel is the big 10. So when you look at the SEC, obviously Florida State kind of fits the billing of an SEC brand. You're in this, which, goodness gracious, the geog the geography or uh, the geography of college football doesn't make sense anymore. Anyway, we have West Coast teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, so that doesn't so much matter. But like you said, the regionality of it would be great for Florida State to be in the SEC. I think one, you get some matchups that are huge. You get better traveling fan bases because let's be honest the ACC doesn't really travel that well outside of Clemson and maybe one or two other teams Virginia Tech uh, a program like that but there's a lot of times where we welcome in the ACC opponents and their fans just don't show up and so I think you get more travel you get for your home games from an opposing fan base so I think everybody wants that everyone would love to see Florida State versus LSU which you know had two great games the last two years they would love to see that happen more often Obviously, you play Florida every year already, so that's another thing to consider there. Like, I, I know people say that Florida doesn't want us in this in the conference, and they actually we tried to join a while back, and they they kind of blocked us on that. But they also told the SEC also sold, uh, told Texas A and M they'd be the only Texas school, and now Texas is added. So I don't think they too much care about that. I think that the most likely landing spot is the Big Ten. Now, the reason I say that is because it, it feels. It would feel weird to sue ESPN and the ACC to get out of an ESPN-owned property to just go to another one. That seems a little strange, too. But at the end of the day, you have to kind of think of it like this. ESPN wants t eyes on TVs, and Florida State wants the money from the eyes on the TV. So if they can 
we all know the ACC plays second fiddle to the SEC as far as in ESPN's eyes, budget wise. We all know that. So if you can bring in your largest moneymaker out of your kind of second tier brand and put them in the SEC, I don't know that the that ESPN really cares what happens to the ACC at the end of the day. And so I that is the only reason with the lawsuit going against ESPN why maybe not. But something that I, I've thought about myself is uh, it may be easier to negotiate with someone that you're suing what if what if ESPN just says okay look what if we just let you go to the SEC would that be an easy like would you just leave us alone you know what I mean because this is costing the ACC a lot of money legally too it is Florida State as well I think the Big Ten is the most likely because you're you're a Fox owned property you're getting away from ESPN I the money is better there so I think right now anyway right now it's better so I think financially the big 10 is the best option and i will say that the the school administration when they first rolled this out they said look we understand the sec the regionality that's what fans want but we're going to do what's in the best interest of the program and so that means if they have to join the big 10 then that's the route they'll go to to get out of the acc now i think the important thing to remember here is i don't think florida state would have gone through this without having kind of a handshake agreement of somewhere to go. Obviously, you know, as long as they're in a conference, they can't get a verbal guarantee or written guarantee or anything like that. But I think they have a good feeling that they have a landing spot uh, as far as the Big Ten goes. So we'll see how things play out. I mean, I, I think it's probably going to be the Big Ten, but I, I think I could see where the SEC – personally, I want the SEC. The fan base wants the SEC. But I think as a whole, as long as we get out of the ACC, I think that is just – really a win in the end because it's all about the money. And, and I think when people look at it from a Florida state Clemson perspective, there's nothing against the ACC. Like I, I have no personal vendetta against the ACC, but I think what people lose sight of is Clemson and Florida state. First off, their biggest in-state rival is an SEC team. So they have to compete against these teams that are making 30 to 50 million more than them in the next five and 10 years down the road. You also have the lack of playoff spots and the, and the revenue distribution, which, you know, is something with the Big 12 as well that they're dealing with. And so I think when you look at the history of athletic budget spending and what they've done on the field, there's really two brands that compete year in and year out. I know Florida State's had a down period um, where they compete for the playoffs and for national championship. A lot of the ACC schools are kind of like, all right, you know, if we make the ACC title once every 10 years and, you know, the Duke's Mayo Bowl is fun or something like that, th then that's perfectly fine with them. But if you're trying to compete for national championships year in and year out and you have to explain to your, you know, your boosters why you lost to Florida, why, you know, they came and poached one of your coaches because they can do that. I think you also have to consider if we go to a, a player employee model you know, where the schools are now paying players. That's going to make a huge difference when you're $50 million behind your biggest uh, your biggest in-state rival. So I think that's where people have to understand why Florida State and Clemson are doing this and why the other ACC teams may be a little more reluctant because you have direct competition in those other conferences. Yeah, well, there's a lot there to um, unpack. So, yeah, the, the future seems... I mean, for one, for college football overall, like we've discussed, is already very murky. Nobody knows where it's going, but it does seem like that Florida State is a brand that is big enough to get through all of this and end up in the right landing spot. I, I've been hearing some, you know, chatter now, and it's probably just because uh, people are bored while they wait for the next, uh, you know, right. big news to drop. But that uh, Florida State and Clemson could end up in the Big Twelve. Now, I find that a lot of things would have to go very wrong. I think for I Florida too, State, yeah. uh, maybe really burning all bridges with ESPN and then whatever happened, you know, something happens at the big 10 and then uh, you come out. But I really do think Florida state is one that's um, about, I don't know. There's, I think a very low likelihood that you don't get into one of those. So um, it sounds like you're saying that fans in general, cause I've heard kind of both as I've poked around on the internet on, uh, you know, preferring Big Ten over SEC, but it seems like you're saying fans in general kind of want the SEC. Oh, for sure. I okay. mean, I think everybody wants out of the Big Ten, or excuse me, out of the ACC, and the Big Ten does technically pay more. And I think you have a, a, a small group of fans who are just 
hell bent about being out, away from ESPN in general. They just don't want anything to do with them. So those are a lot of the, the people that want to go to the Big Ten. Mm. And I think, you know, games in the in the shoe and white out at Penn State and, and in the big house, and that all sounds fun. But I think just from a regionality standpoint, we already have a rival in the SEC. You could possibly bring Clemson with you. We know how, how successful the LSU series was as far as viewership and things like that. I think most people want the regionality of the SEC so we can travel to more games because it's – I mean, it's going to be tough to travel to some of these. I mean, you look at the Big Ten. I mean, you might have to go to USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, which is just not doable for a lot of the common fans. So I think most people want the SEC, but I think some people just – a, want out of the ACC, and B, want nothing to do with ESPN in general. But, you know, really, unless you go to the Big Ten, it's kind of hard to get away from ESPN, and they own the playoffs now anyway. So I think it's 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 unavoidable to be involved to some degree with ESPN, but I think we're just looking for something that gets us to a better payday. And I know people will say, well, you competed last year at a high level without the, you know, with the revenue gap still being present but it's not as bad as it's going to be we haven't seen a lot of these new tv contracts be renegotiated with a lot of the additions you know how much is the big 12 going to pay without texas and oklahoma how much will all these new additions to the sec and the big 10 i mean it's going to it's going to continue to grow and i think we just want to get to that fair level we're like yeah florida state's done a lot with a lot less for a long time but if you give them that budget of the SEC and of the Big Ten, I'll, it would be interesting for me as, an, as a lifelong FSU fan to see what they could do in with that kind of money. And I know some people will say, OK, well, how do you compete? You know, you oh, you got the ACC, you know, you got the easiest path or, or whatnot. And Florida State has competed, you know, in, in the past. Obviously, we play an SEC team every year. I don't think it's a, a competition thing. Um, you know, when you look at Florida State over the last 10 years, they are 11 and five against the SEC. Four of their losses were against top 15 SEC teams. And that also included a four year rebuild where we were just dreadful. Uh, they beat five SEC teams that were ranked. And they're, we don't play the Big 12 a lot, but we do have a winning record against Michigan, Ohio State, and then uh, USC. I think we're tied against Penn State. So I think they can compete. Are they going to go undefeated every year? Of course not. It's a tougher, it's a tougher conference. I have no problem admitting that. But with the new 12-team playoff and the additional spots, you don't have to be undefeated in one of those conferences every year. You can finish 10-2 and two and probably still make the playoffs, which is what you're aiming to do. Yeah. So with, um, I mean, the, going from the SEC for, or comparing the two, uh, the Big Ten is, is, you know, great in a lot of ways. You know, I grew up in uh, Michigan, so I'm familiar with that too. But um, it just feels like the environment in SEC games is just, Right. Definitely. And and not that the Big Ten doesn't have some really good environments as well, but just in general, I mean, across the board, it seems like the SEC is just um, pretty wild uh, versus, you know, thinking about having to yeah travel up to Minnesota in November. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, to, to make a game. Uh, yeah, it will be. We're thinking of the fans traveling the other way. Um, so but with the SEC, because it does feel like the approach that Florida State has taken um, to the lawsuit and everything it does seem a little, I don't know. It feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Clemson is perhaps hedging their bets a little bit more. They're trying to, you know, come out and attack while not burning all bridges. Well, it seems like Florida state has kind of really come out, um, strong against, um, ESPN, which like you said, could be a tactic for, Hey, you know, we can make this all go away if you just let us get in. But, um, so let's assume that, like you said, the administration, we know that um, they're doing a lot to become AAU and uh, making yep. a lot of changes and, and, and growing that way. Um, and so let's assume Florida State does end up going to the Big Ten. Now, obviously, geographically, it's difficult, as we've talked about. Um, the They're trying to you know meet this somewhat arbitrary, I feel like, um, qualification of the AAU. But in what other ways do you feel like that Florida State – could uh, really fit in with the Big Ten, or maybe that they they just don't. Like, how do they they stack up? Well, I Not think on the field, just in general, right? I think when you look at the AAU thing, that was also obviously a big kind of roadblock at first. But the Big Ten has said that it is not like a hard line in the sand that it's an absolute no. And from what I understand, Nebraska has lost their AAU status recently as well. And they're obviously not getting kicked out of the big 10, which is another thing on a, on a side note that I'm waiting to see with college realignment is no one's really been booted from a conference yet. So 
that's something I'm interested to see, like Vandy with the SEC or something like that. But I think when you look at, at that as a whole, and, and they said in their opening statements when they were going to launch the lawsuit that Florida State is pursuing AAU status. So I think they would be okay as far as that goes. Now, right. when you just look at a fit, I mean, geography-wise, it's hard to see that as a fit. I mean, it, we're obviously, we would be, unless they snag somebody else, the only school in the South. So it, it would be nice. But I think that's another conversation to have about where, who, how desirable is it for the Big Ten to add Florida State? Because you now would put your footprint in the South, in, in the backyard of the SEC. And does ESPN want to block Big Ten from, from doing that? Because I think the at the end of the day, people have to understand that all of this is it's basically TV arguments tv contracts the tv fox and espn are running everything and they are the ones that are controlling this is not about who fits best where this is about i want to have the most money and the most resources and the most views on tv and i don't want you to have it either you know it's stuff like that so i think that florida state is very desirable as a brand and i think some people really kind of came out early and said well i don't think they want florida state i don't think that they have that desirability that that they think they have but i think they do fit in well uh, just a couple of notes that I put together before we jumped on here. When you look at the 2024 U.S. news rankings as far as academics, uh, Florida State would be 13th, so kind of lower third, two-thirds there. They would be six in the SEC, so I think they would fit in there as well. Um, when you look at all sports as far as Director's Cup, they would be six in the uh, Big Ten, and then they would be eighth in the, big, or in, in the SEC. As far as average S&P Plus rankings, 2002 to present in football, they would be the fourth highest in the Big Ten and the seventh in the SEC. So I think across the board, Florida State Florida State is also really good in Olympic sports, so I think they would be able to compete there as well. Um, now, they obviously don't have the endowment that a lot of the Big Ten schools have or even the SEC schools, so they're a little bit lower there. But I also think it's just, man, that's Florida is such a massive market. You know, People talk about they already have a team in Florida – and they also have a team in South Carolina. Well, Florida has 23 million people in that state. South Carolina, where I live myself, only has five and a half million. So, I mean, the viewership is there. And when you look at the viewership numbers TV-wise, as far as what Florida State's brand is, I think there's no question that they are desirable in any TV market. Just looking at the numbers. I mean, just, and I'll throw a couple out at you here. Just looking at last year, and I think we also have to understand that Florida State was terrible from 2018 to 2021. I, you know, it was a tough time, but when you look at the last two years, I mean, they really did stack up. And, and if you look at just what they did against UGA for, for, um, God, that's a memory we don't want to hash up, but just that game alone, even in the butt whipping that it was, it was the most viewed non-playoff bowl game and the most of any orange bowl since 2017, the next high, and it had 10.39 million viewers. The next highest ACC bowl was Kansas state, NC state at 4.3 million. Florida State last year against uh, – they were one of the top three – or excuse me, top 25 most viewed teams. They had two of the top 25 most viewed games and a third if you add the ACC championship, but it's not counted because it's on ACC Network. Um, you know, just looking at them against the SEC alone in 2022 and 2023 when they were at least 10 games, uh, you know, 10-game winning team or better, they played four games against the SEC, five with the bowl. They averaged 7.13 million viewers against SEC teams, 8.76 if you count the bowl. So when people look at FSU's TV numbers, you also have to factor in they're playing ACC competition, which drags those numbers down drastically. And to kind of paint the, the picture on that, they have in, in TV what's called the 4 million club or whatnot, where teams uh, games eclipse a 4 million mark, which is, which is great. In the last two years, the ACC has not had a single game eclipse 4 million that did not involve Clemson, Florida State, or Notre Dame. So you, you can see who the two most desirable brands are. And when you look at what they've done, those numbers that I talked about that they, where I threw out what they did against the, the SEC, and even when they played Oklahoma in the bowl game last year, which was a, a Big 12 team at the time, that was the second most watched non-New uh, Year's Six bowl game. So when Florida State plays, they draw in numbers. It's, you know, that's not trying to be arrogant or anything like that. They bring the viewership, and that's even against ACC competition that, let's face it, just kind of doesn't hold up the other end of the bargain. So that's why I think if they end up in the in the SEC or the Big Ten, I think when they see these numbers, I think that's what makes them attractive to these other conferences. It's just from a, a simply eyes on TV sets what they bring. 
Jesse and I had a great conversation, but it went really long, so I'm gonna go ahead and split this video into a couple parts. Now, if you're somebody that would prefer it all out in once in one long video, let me know in the comments, because I've never done that. I've always uh, tried to keep them a little bit smaller, so if you prefer long form videos, let me know, and I'll, I'll, next time I'll do that, it certainly makes it easier for me. But in the meantime, please keep an eye out for part two of this video, and also go check out Jesse and all his content I will put how you can find him down in the show notes. So be sure to check him out, especially if you're a Florida State fan or a fan of the ACC, go check him out, follow his stuff. And uh, also please like this video, subscribe to our channel as well. It really does help us a lot as we continue to put out more and more conference realignment uh, content and we'll have other guests from other schools across the ACC and in college football. So uh, please do subscribe to the channel. And as always, go Cougs!